were you a very uh, an imaginative child? I believe one school report referred to me as being too often in the moon. So that will tell you, you see. Yes. Something. Did you enjoy, um, do you remember, did you enjoy playing with younger or older children than yourself? I was a loner, strictly ah. a loner. Uh, were you a ladies' man or were you a, a shy chap? I was a loner. Ladies? You were a loner. Do you dream vividly? Uh, reasonably so, yes. I've, I've, uh, the, I, I think that's almost the basis of one's work, is um, the making of nightmares with as much realism as you can, just as in a dream it is extremely vivid. Mm. After all, when you're on your way to the gallows in the dream, it is so vivid that you're glad when you wake up. Have you ever studied, r seriously, that is, um, psychological textbooks? No. No. Well, I was present a year or so ago at a group therapy meeting at a mental hospital where doctors and patients alike, I'm afraid, tore psycho to shreds and said that in their opinion it had set back the cause of mental health several years. How do you answer critics who say things like this? Well, I don't know um, who they were. No. Because, um, you know, people often complain about the effect of films on certain minds, but they generalize about this. I have to ask them, what minds does it affect? When Psycho was made, a man was arrested for murder in Los Angeles, and he had confessed to killing three women. The last murder he committed, he said, was influenced by the fact that he had just seen Psycho. So naturally, the newspapers got on to me and asked for my comment. And I said, what film did he see when he murdered the second woman? Can I ask you this? A French director called Georges Franjou made a film called Eyes Without a Face, and a lot of people said that it was the most disgusting, the important word is disgusting, horror film they'd ever seen. Would you be very upset if anybody said that about any of your more horrific pieces? Yes, I think that's a, that's a bad word. I yes, I like think that. so, too. No, you see, the whole point is that um, in any creation of any, uh, how should we call it, thriller material or suspense material, you have to have a sense of humour to do it. Mm. Very often one has sat with a writer and said, oh, wouldn't it be fun to kill him off this way? <laughs> and it's, it, it's make-believe. Yes. You, know? you see, you cannot be satisfied just photographing a person speaking. That's, an, that's only an extension of the theatre, which most films are today. They are not motion pictures. They're merely extensions of, of uh, the proscenium arch. Yes. Except the only difference is that you've given the whole audience opera glasses to look closer. Mm. Your films, you see, I think, are full of these interesting sort of details of um, hands misdialing telephones, hands hesitating on doorknobs, fingers drumming nervously on tabletops, which to me are the whole stuff of drama. But strangely enough, and it may be Cinemascope that's done this, why do you think that this kind of shooting is so much out of vogue now? Oh, I think it's largely because people don't work in the medium they're supposed to be working. There is a phrase, it might sound pompous, uh, called the language of the camera. Yes. You see, the camera can do anything. It can photograph the top of a pin's head with the Lord's Prayer on it, if you want it to. Mm. But the camera can comment on anything you wish. And it's very vivid when you do it. I have a very strict rule. Never put characters into a setting without the setting itself is used dramatically. In other words, we're in a mill. Therefore, you cannot be in a mill without the mill playing its part, mm -hmm. you see. Yes. Uh, for example, in North by Northwest, there's a scene where Cary Grant is sent out into the countryside. Now, you know, it's a setup for him to be shot. Now, one says to oneself, now, what's the cliché here? You'll go out, you'll be sent to the corner of the street at night, 
stand under a lamp. The cobbles will be washed by recent rain. <laughs> a cat will slither along the wall and a face will peer from a window. This is the cliche, but you're setting up a mood of atmosphere which I think destroys the audience's uh, anticipation. Right. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a normal method of creating a, a scary atmosphere. Yes, yes. Now I said, I won't do that. I will start with nothing. A prairie country, not a tree, not a house in sight, just a roadway. And Cary Grant gets out of a bus and stands there. Now the audience is saying, well, it's perfectly normal. What can happen here? There's not a sign of anything. So the it's a deliberate thing. I mean, I'm giving you the extreme example. Yes, you see. yes, of course. Now that now we give them a bit for a good measure. We let the limousine go by, or the cars go by. Now a man gets out of a jalopy across the street. It drives away and leaves a solitary figure of a man. Now Cary Grant's curious goes over, and the man's waiting for a bus. Now, his bus is coming along, and just as the bus pulls up, the man said, that's funny, and Grant said, what's funny? There's a crop duster over there dusting a place where there are no crops. <laughs> and before any com any elaboration, he's on the bus and is away. <laughs> so the audience are left alone with this first clue that <laughs> something's wrong around here. In all suspense, you see, the most important thing is to give an audience information. You cannot expect an audience to, how shall we say, get anxieties without giving them the information to be anxious about. To, to give you a simple thing, a man is standing there, another man is creeping towards him with a raised hammer. Now the audience can see the victim and can see the attacker. So now they get anxious and they want to shout, Look out! It's as, it, it, it's as simple as that. And here's another interesting thing. Why is it that the audience are more anxious about the wrongdoer than they are about the person who might discover her? If you take a scene, a simple scene, of a burglar in a woman's bedroom rifling at the dressing table for jewellery, and you cut to the woman, the owner, coming up the stairs, the whole audience saying, hurry up, get out. They're not in sympathy with her at all, and she's the victim. Yes. How do you account for that? 